So I came over to the island and I could not find the campsite. I was thinking, like I was saying before, the book that I have, I don't think, you know, it hasn't been updated in 30 years. It was written in like 91. And uh, so I was looking all over this island for a campsite. A lot of it's just swamp and then just overgrown stuff. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to like literally set up my tent just in a hole somewhere, like in between the trees. But anyway, so I walked up to the top of the, the highest point on the, the island after circling it like three times and um, finally found it. But anyway, on the way, so I, I, land, I landed the canoe on the other side of the island. Uh, let me fix this. Landed the canoe on the other side of the island and I was getting back in the canoe. I was in about three, four feet of water. I was about three feet. And my foot got caught on something in the water. So thank God most of my stuff was, everything was in the boat. But anyway, I fell like some pleb. And totally fell <laughs> so bad. I mean, I couldn't have fallen any worse. My head was touching the, the bottom of the lake. So I am completely soaking wet, head to toe, freezing cold, tired from eight hours. That's probably why I fell is because I'm so tired. Anyway, totally drenched. Ah, the pistol's wet, everything in my pockets is wet. I don't even know what's, I know my lighter was in, that was in my life jacket, it's wet, but I can usually get those going again. <sighs> Holy cow, what an adventure. Totally wet, I'll just set up a clothesline and dry everything out. No big deal, but I gotta tell you, this place, it's remote, man. This is, I can't. Like I said, now it's eight o'clock. I left at 11. So that's nine hours from beginning to finally here. So, but I found the sweetest freaking surprise. You're not gonna believe this. Here we go. Anyway, here's the fire, the fire pit. A bucket for um, putting out the fire. I don't know who the hell freaking hauls those things in here. But the best part is this. Oh my gosh. Dude, this is some luxury stuff right here. That's a camp chair. So someone hauled it in here. Didn't want to carry it back. Left it. Now I get to sit in it all night. Oh my gosh, it's going to be freaking awesome. So I am stoked. So anyway, I am gonna set up my tent, get a fire started, start making some food, and uh, I don't know, get busy resting. Holy cow, that camp chair is gonna be freaking the, sh the bomb. I can't even believe that. All right, maybe I'll get, a, I'll get going again once I start making some food. All right, here's the camp. I gotta tell you, oh my God, I'm tired. Not gonna do a lot of talking or filming tonight. Got a lot more days for that. There's a tarp I set up. I'm definitely not a tarp guy. <laughs> so if you're looking at, looking for some place to figure out how to, or to learn how to set up tarps, you should not pay attention to what I did here. There's the fire, got some water boiling. Good morning. Well, it's finally the next day. Actually, I shouldn't say good morning, I should say good afternoon, because uh, I literally slept all morning. Uh, it's around noon right now. So, just woke up, gonna get some breakfast going. So I think this morning I'm gonna do some mountain house breakfast, breakfast skillet and uh, some breakfast sausage that I brought and uh, I don't know I'll see you when it's cooked okay.
So what does it say? Oh, I just burnt the instructions. Well, usually says leave them in for, let the water set for about nine minutes. I go way longer than that. Maybe 15, 20 minutes. it while I make some coffee. Get the floaters out, just the big ones anyway. So this little rocket stove, rock, pocket rocket deal, I just got off Amazon and it was, it was literally, I think, 12 bucks, maybe 10 bucks. And it's funny, I've had it over, over 10 years and it's worked great. It's kind of funny, you can really find good deals and uh, I don't, on good stuff, if you just kind of do your research and shop around. I mean, those MSR ones, yeah, they're great, but this one works fine. And it's lasted me a long time. So here's the bush buddy. That's how I'm gonna cook my sausage. I'll show you what uh, what I got for tackle. So all I bring with me is this little box. So I brought a couple of these diving things. I tried those in Swan Lake yesterday. <laughs> Zilch, not even a bite. Got a couple of those. Got some spinners. This is a Vibrex, Blue Fox Vibrex. Those are kind of the go-to around here. Right now though, I'm either gonna go up between this pink Vibrex, but I'm gonna try this one. This is, says a mother, oh, father. I guess this is a Martin. So it kind of looks like a little trout fry. So I'm gonna try this one first. This is, I did well with this one last summer. All right, saw some jumping in here. Let's try a little casting.
we're trolling now. See how we do. There's definitely fish jumping all around this lake. Okay. I just hooked up in, into a pretty big fish. I've been fishing for like an hour. Nothing. And finally, I just got a huge ass hit. So I've got something big on. I've been, oh yeah, baby. So I've been seeing some big ones jump in here. I've been wondering what they are. I don't know if they're rainbows or what these are, but they're big. I think they might be kokanees or dollies. I'm not sure, but this is a big fish. Yeah, this is what I've been seeing. I'm guessing it's a kokanee. Holy cow. Get him nice and tired before I try to... It's a rainbow. And it's a big one. I get him super tired. Love this man, this is sweet. Yep, it's a rainbow. I'm eating good tonight. Big fish, man. It's gonna be hard to get in the boat without getting him off. All right, he's tired now. Look at that fish. Oh man, that is a healthy, beautiful rainbow. And this one is going to be dinner tonight. Really good shot of him. Look at that. This is, I don't know, 14, 16 inches. Beautiful fish. Not as big as the one I caught last year, but this is a nice, healthy trout. It's a really cool thing about these, these lakes back there, they're like untouched of fishing. I mean, people just don't come out here. It's too, too much work, you know? So anyway, time to dispatch you in a nice way. So I just picked one. These are kind of the leafy parts. It's kind of interesting. 
leaves aren't that great. But this is like the the lower stock part. It was actually under the under the water. So um it's not bad. It's not like something super good. If I had to compare it it's kind of asparagusy with the texture like a, a real soft green onion. But if you can see, it's like layers. So it's kind of like a texture of a green onion, but it tastes like celery or something. No, not celery, but asparagus. Probably in a survival situation. Um, it's pretty interesting. I mean, it's not anything like I've had before. Anyway, I'm gonna pick some and cook it with my trout tonight. Yeah, this is what the roots look like. I guess you can eat these too. Oh, it's all. Let's see this. That's the one I just picked. Yeah, so there's the root. I guess people dry these and make, make flour out of it. Oh, <laughs> the root's not good. Real dry. And weird tasting. Here's another shoot. I don't know. Kind of swampy tasting. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's the best way I could describe it. Mm. Borderline spit that out. All right, there's the trout I'm gonna eat tonight. I'd say that trout was about four or five pounds. Here's my hand for a comparison. It's a hefty fish, man. You can see how the the uh, meat for it's really nice and uh, pink. Yeah, so I'm gonna fry half of it and then I'm gonna bake the other half with tin foil and garlic and lemon. So, yeah, maybe I'll film that. I will. So anyway, I'm gonna get a fire going and... I haven't found anything to eat this with. The cattails, I was gonna like fry up some cattails with it, but they kind of taste like swamp. So, nah. This is how I do trout. Got my fish fry. I'm thinking mac and cheese might go good with this. I don't know. Still thinking about it. Yeah, why not? I'll make mac and cheese with it too. So this is salt, pepper, garlic that I mixed together and I just put it in a little bag. So basically I always bring some like uh, tin foil with me. Oh, it's 
tear this in half. Super lightweight, really great for roasting things. In the fire, fire's nice and burned down. Got some nice coals going. Okay, so basically I got my olive oil. Just kinda put that there. My trout filet. Man, these are nice, beautiful. It's like uh, like an inch thick, man. It's so, that sucker was, a, he was a nice little pig. So anyway. Olive oil. Where'd my spice go? There it is. Okay. Boy, it's funny. It's like the trout in these lakes that are like the really far out ones. They're just freaking big. It's like a bigger species. I don't know why they're big. Maybe it's because no one fishes here. I don't know. My pants is kind of my sink right now. Okay, it already smells good. Got my Spiderco. I don't know what this thing's called. Brought this with me. I like this one because it uh, it's got a real solid lock on it. I like Spiderco knives. They're pretty cool. So, get my lemon going. Try not to drop yours in the fire. It's got a couple pine needles on it. That'll just add to the flavor. Throw a couple lemons in there. I'll save this rest of this lemon for the rest of the fish. Basically, all I gotta do is just wrap it up. You know, this doesn't take that long to cook, so I'll get everything else started. Set it on this rock. So I'm gonna put this one on the pocket rocket and I'll use the bush buddy for frying. I like having two. So, yeah, okay. It's so my other fillet. I'm going to douse this in this fish fry.
extra olive. Put some olive oil in there. Try to get this thing up as level as I can. Okay. First piece of fish in. Yeah. <laughs> we got a nice little handy spatula. Now that's done. Let me see here. Perfect. You know, I was just getting in my boat. Oh, right now. So right now, setting out for my second fishing outing. You know, I was just kinda getting in the boat just now. It's Got me thinking about life jackets. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I can't stress how important these things are. The one I'm wearing right now literally saved my life two years ago. Um, I had just gotten off my heavy chemo, so I was like super weak. I mean, I was kind of okay, but I had just gotten off of it. And, um, So my wife and I were paddling kind of the mid river, the Kenai River, and um, it just started getting pretty hairy out there. And uh, just, I don't know, the water was moving kind of faster than we planned. And we got to a point where we were just kind of trying to get around a lot of rocks and stuff. And then finally we just went down in this like some big trough. The canoe kind of just went up like that. <laughs> Once it's up like that, it just went sideways and dumped us out. And uh, so we were about in the middle of the river, and there we are, my wife and I, swimming for it. And I was just like, definitely not as strong as as I normally would be. You know, I was pretty weak at the time. And this life jacket, I'll tell you what, I there's no way. I could have swam to shore. That water's super cold, it moves pretty fast, and it took every ounce of strength to make it to shore. 
having even having the life jacket on. So wear your life jacket, people. Especially if you're out doing stuff like this, you fall in the water, you're on your own, man. And I'll tell you what you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing everything you can to swim you and the canoe and your paddle to shore. Because <laughs> you ain't going to be, if you don't stay with your canoe and you lose it, you're done. <laughs> you better have a lighter on you so you can start a fire at least. It's another thing I keep with me safety wise. I take in a, I have a Garmin in reach. GPS kind of a I don't know it tracks your progress it you can send an SOS message out on it so I keep that with me let everyone know that I care about like where I'm at plus if something does happen I can hit that SOS button and supposedly someone will show up to pick you up anyway it seems trolling's the way to go this lake so I'll keep that Keep trying that, and I'm just gonna circle this island. So I just kind of wedge this pole in between my legs and start paddling. Uh, it's pretty windy out. So I've read uh, I've watched a couple of reviews on these um, Winona prisms. Everybody's like, "Ah, oh, man, they freaking wind blows you around like a leaf in the like a leaf in the wind." You know, I have to tell you that's not really true. Um, if you just have a little bit of paddling experience and you keep, just make sure you keep the bow into the wind. It's fine. It doesn't blow me at all, hardly at all. I'm always in control of this thing. Since I've owned it, I've never like had the wind blow me like in a 180. So I've been fine with it. Like I said, just you don't want to get sideways in the wind. You want to keep always be thinking about like the bow of your canoe is going straight as possible. You know, in a when it's windy, it's good to use like a J-stroke technique. So you don't have to keep switching sides. It's blowing me around quite a bit right now. Well, no fish today. Seeing them jump, but just can't seem to hook into one. Well, I don't know, it doesn't look that way right now, but it's just super windy. And it's just so much work um, trying to troll around this island right now. So, I don't know, if, it, if this lake lays down and the wind dies off, I might um, try it again later tonight. I'm not positive, but um, I think there might be two of them. This, this might be the mom just like taking care of some eggs or something. Maybe the husband. Oh, this uh, mosquito has slept in the tent all night with me. It didn't bite me. You can tell if they bite you because they're filled up with blood. You know what, mosquito? You suck. You're not very good at being a mosquito. I spent like eight hours in the tent and you didn't bite me. Now you don't get to, to take all your blood and feed all your little friends. Yeah, dude. You're not very good at being you. <laughs> So 
So now, you need to go fly off hungry. Sorry, dude. So, uh, I plan on leaving today, but it's looking like um, it's really windy. So I, I don't think it'd be a good idea to take off yet. So I'm thinking if the wind doesn't die, it's right now, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, if the wind doesn't die down by noon, I'm just gonna stay another night. Cause that won't, I don't wanna be doing these trails at night. Well, the winds died down a bit. It's kind of coming in waves right now, or gusts or whatever. So I'm gonna pack up, do a time lapse of that real quick, and uh, see how long this takes. So right now it's 10:45, and uh, oh, let's pack up camp. <laughs> Wish me luck. I don't know how much I'm gonna film on this because I'm gonna be in the main focus just to get back to the truck today. I'm not gonna fish a lot or anything. I just kind of want to get back. And yeah, I'm super tired and uh, still really sore. So we're gonna see how it goes. Um, I guess if I have to, I can just set up camp halfway home, and it's not like I have to get home for anything, except for the morels. But hey. Whatever. Um, yeah, let's get going. Let's get going. 